What's up, guys? It's your host, Hao, here for another episode of Vietnam Innovators uh, here at the Radio Room in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, we're actually uh, wrapping up uh, our shooting at the studio very soon. Uh, we're moving to a new office. Uh, we'll keep the studio, too, so you might see it here and there on the Vietcetra shows. But uh, very soon, we'll be filming out of a new studio, so look out for that. Um, but meanwhile, we have a guest here. Actually, it's our first time meeting in person. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's been, uh, we've been, you know, uh, virtual uh, connections, I guess, and friends for a year now uh, amidst this COVID situation. So Brian Lee, yep. he's the country manager of Glintz yep. uh, for Vietnam. Glintz is a startup that uh, is all around uh, mostly Southeast Asia, but Asia as well. And um, they're here in Ho Chi Minh City and in Hanoi as well, or all of Vietnam rather. Very accurate. And, um, <laughs> So Brian's at the studio today. We first met online actually when he was uh, stuck in Singapore, but he's now returned to Vietnam. Yep. Uh, he's been with Glintz for a few years now. And we're gonna hear from him about what he's doing at Glintz and what Glintz, uh, having just raised a, a significant amount of funding um, and how they envision their roadmap for Vietnam being such a critical market in Southeast Asia and why the greater tech community is so excited about Vietnam as well. And we'll hear from him about many other things as well. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It, I know it's a busy you know, <laughs> start to the week, so thank yeah. you for making time here today. We'll keep it nice and tight and okay. get to the hard hitting questions right away. It's okay, as long as we have fun today. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that's the most important thing. Um, so Brian, you know, yeah, it's been a, been a year. We're meeting for the first time in person. Yep. I know Glintz pretty well. It seems like you know Vietcetra pretty well too. You've been a reader for some time. Yeah. Um, so no intros there. Uh, Glintz, though, for those of the audience that don't know, it sure. sounds very uh, glittery, <laughs> very fun. <laughs> um, and hopefully that's the, the objective as well, to, to bring something fun and new to the yeah. industry that you're in. Yeah. So uh, aside from me, just explaining what it is, okay. um, we'd love to hear from you. Give us sure. your elevator pitch. Sure. Okay. Glintz, we're trying to scale it as a full stack talent platform that supports talents in Southeast Asia and Asia, right? Like what you mentioned in their career discovery and their career development uh, journey. And then also then bridging these talents with the employers and the companies. So let me try to break it down into layman words. So basically we play in two spaces, careers and human resources. Mm. Careers is about helping people discover what they want to do in life, specifically in their careers and upgrading their skill sets so that they can advance that ladder. And when it comes to human resources, right now we mainly have two services. First is a local recruitment service. So most of the companies in Vietnam, uh, they will know us uh, for Headhunter, mm. for example. Um, and the second one is to help companies with a cross-border or remote team solution. So helping them hire and build their teams outside of their own home countries. Okay. I'm sure there's a lot of demand for that in Vietnam. There is. Yeah, out of most, if all of the Southeast Asian countries, actually. Yeah, yeah you do know. Not, not, yeah. yeah, so that's keeping you busy, I'm sure. That is. <laughs> I get a lot of requests. So instead of me you trying do. to help them, I'll just send them to you. Then. You should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. Very glad. And it, it could be even small teams as big uh, exactly. as big. And so it can be as small as less than five people. Okay. Uh, I have my biggest client right now. They're looking mm -hmm. to scale to 50 people by wow. the end of the year. Yeah. All outsourced. Uh, all, I, I wouldn't use the word outsourced. Uh, they manage these talents directly and okay. it's not only for a short period of time mm. not for projects right okay, okay. Uh, it's it's really a full-time basis right uh, and uh, yes it's under our payroll because they don't have an entity in Got Vietnam it, it. See, and that's how we support them with the contracts with okay. the administrative staff uh, sometimes with an office as well mm -hmm. right oh, but wow. when it comes to the day-to-day -day work right mm -hmm. it's it's fully under the company the client okay well, yeah, let's let's talk about those three before we kind of dive sure. into everything else. Because um, sure. I wasn't familiar with the third one. Okay. Uh, that's that's new information for okay. me and okay. hopefully a lot of other people. Yeah. Um, but let's move back to the consumer one first. Okay. So, uh, I mean, there's two parts. The second part being more business facing. The yes. first one is more, uh, I guess, your everyday kind yep. of um, person, Job curious seekers, about exactly. careers exactly. and stuff like that. So. I'm like a 25 year old. Um, you Are know, you 25? No, no, not me. <laughs> Hypothetically, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm not 25. Thank God. Okay. Uh, thank God that was behind me now. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's say I'm a 25 year old just living in Ho Chi Minh City. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm at a job right now, and I'm seeking to either upgrade my skills or maybe even look around yep. a little bit. Potentially, I'm pretty happy where I am, but maybe you never know. Um, so, how do I use Glints exactly? Like, what is that interface and experience great, like? Great. Great. Yeah. yeah. So I broke down Glintz uh, on the career side into two parts, career discovery and uh, career upskilling. Mm -hmm. uh, in Vietnam right now, if you were to type glintz.com onto the browser, what you will essentially see is a job portal, 
right? So very similar to your Vietnam Works and your Career Builder, mm -hmm. people come onto Glint and they can look for great opportunities. Um, what's not already in um, Vietnam, right? We haven't launched these two products yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it Community and Expert Class. So Community, the idea really is a career forum. So think about Reddit, but for careers mm. specifically. Uh, and, and, and that uh, that product, the way we see it is it helps people, especially young people with their discovery into what kind of companies they want to work for, what, what uh, what's interesting about this job and versus that job, uh, what are the different skill sets that you need to advance in this mm -hmm. career, things mm -hmm. like that. So it's about the entire uh, you know journey, right? Where one usually has a lot of questions, especially for the younger people, right? That's where community will come in to serve. Uh, we are planning to launch that probably sometime towards the end of this year or maybe early next year. The next product is uh, under the upskilling umbrella. So it's called Expert Class. The way to think about Expert Class is a centralized platform where you get um, speakers who are professionals in what they do already. So mm. they're not you know, celebrities like people from Masterclass. <laughs> These are people who are working in uh, top companies, for example, uh, a product marketer in Lazada or a uh, brand marketer in Shopee, mm. right? So uh, real life industry experts, right? Professionals who are already, uh, who are probably maybe three to five years your mm -hmm. senior, yeah. right? Uh, and I'm like, wow, I want to be like them. How did they enter Lazada? How did they actually attain these kind of skill sets, right? So uh, getting these industry experts to come onto the platform expert class to organize online classes, live. These are all online live. Only. Yeah, online, online only. Okay. Right now it's all live and online. Mm. Um, Hopefully, when when COVID passes, we will mm. be have we will have uh, physical classes as well. So then, uh, you know, these industry experts they organize their own classes. For example, it can be product marketing one hundred one, or it can be how to get a career, how to build a career in data science, mm. yeah, things like that. So they organize it. People like me, we call them learners, mm -hmm. right? I will pay for a ticket and I will watch oh, those classes. Oh, that's great, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So it'll be localized in Vietnam as well. It'll be localized okay. in Vietnam as well. Right now, uh, it is uh, only in Indonesia, which is our biggest mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. We're also planning to launch that in uh, Vietnam, hopefully sometime in Q4 or Q1 next year. So you guys are adding a layer of content to engage with your community. I'm sure exactly. you have millions at this point across exactly. Southeast Asia and to, uh, get them to return to the platform, use it more than just like, cause not everyone's changing jobs all the time, right? Exactly, so exactly. how do you use the platform exactly. more than just one time a year or exactly. over six months or whatever. So, so. That, that is the problem when it comes to job portal, mm. right? People get engaged during that one or two months process where they're looking for a job mm. and then they basically do not return, right? right? So uh, to really get engaged, highly engaged users on your platform, I think these, uh, the different products that we're launching, right? To really support the talents in that journey. Yeah. Lots of things we can collaborate on that. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. You have some ideas that, on that's your... something okay, else let's, we talk about. Let's talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll catch up. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Cool. So okay. we'll look forward to that launching in Vietnam in the, in the coming months, it sounds like. Uh, um, probably towards the end of the end year. Of the year end exactly. Of year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's really cool. And so that's on a more consumer side in yes. addition to career discovery. Yes. Um, on the business side, so you were talking about how uh, companies can further engage on the platform. Yep. Uh, and then there's also the kind of like talent matching. Yep. So, ah, okay, uh, okay. Or maybe you can break it down a little sure. bit more. Let me, let me break exactly. <laughs> sure. So, um, so we do have a local recruitment service, right? Uh, how how is our service uh, different? How how do we compare with the headhunters over here? I think it's mainly two parts, right? Uh, when it comes to recruitment, it's a it's a game of speed, really. Mm. So the way to think about it is um, one one of the core competencies is how big, right? Uh, your database is and how engaged are your users. Right, the more engaged they are, the more updated, for example, your CVs will be and more relevant to the companies, more useful. Mm. So I think uh, because we have such a strong careers angle, right, uh, it is uh, how we, it, it is our mission for our company, right, and it is how we define ourselves. We're not just a recruitment company. Mm. Recruitment just, just so happens to be our strongest and fastest growing business right now, right, our fastest growing service. Uh, but really, we see ourselves as a, as a talent platform, a full, mm. full stack talent platform, as I mentioned earlier. Recruitment's like top of the funnel. That's like the basic it is yeah way. it is yeah. the main driver of the business right now yeah, yeah. Uh, so because we have such a strong careers angle uh, I, I would argue it's probably uh, the strongest one uh, strongest focus right mm. in Southeast Asia right so um, you know down the road essentially what we're trying to what we're trying to build is 
very a, a very big and highly engaged uh, candidate pool, right? That can then support the recruitment business better. Yeah. So I think that's the first thing, the careers angle. The second thing is about how we understand the recruitment workflow. So um, the idea really is to use um, you know AI and mm-hmm. data science to improve the matching process, and also to use workflow automation tools to 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 streamline uh, a recruiter's work, right? Uh, when they do that uh, matching process. Mm. So the whole idea over here is to reduce uh, the time spent on all of these activities, right? And by giving the recruiters more time, it then basically gives them uh, the opportunity to focus on the higher leverage activities. Now, what is that, right? So let me try to explain this um, to share with you what a week in the life of a recruiter is like, right? So a week, a recruiter talks to probably one to 200 candidates every week. Um, and, 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 and at any one point in time, a recruiter also works with 10 active clients. Mm. So you can see that a job of recruiter is not easy, right? They have so many interactions going on every single day, right? Uh, and they have to deliver a high um, level of service, mm. right? Highly personalized. They have to build the relationships. So um, right now, most companies where, you know, if, if they're not building their own uh, you know, they don't have their own proprietary knowledge or platform to support the recruiters to make this process, uh, you know, simplified, mm-hmm. right? Uh, essentially, they're solely relying on the recruiter to, uh, you know, to have good organizational yeah. skills, right? Uh, good memory and, uh, you be know, really be quick good with on the people. Phone. Exactly, <laughs> click on the phone, right? So I think that is the challenges right now, right? We see that, you know, the industry players aren't really doing this. Uh, and, and this is what we want to do. Build, build this proprietary, proprietary platform and have our recruiters, right, to focus on the relationship building, right, mm. focus on interactions, yeah. Okay, oh, fabulous. And then, and there's that third part we talked about how you guys help build teams. The cross-border, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, that's a new business line, it seems, and it's, it's growing Not quite really. Quickly. Not really. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, just it's more it's not, formalized now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I guess uh, the, the, the reason why it's not so popular in Vietnam uh, is that uh, how we tend to think about it is, a demand market and a supply market. Um, What I mean by this is demand markets are usually in uh, what I call markets where talents are usually more expensive uh, and usually more mature, where the talent uh, demand supply gap is very, it's it's large, it's large. So companies, for example, in Singapore right now, right? um, they, they, They struggle to find talents, right? Uh, specifically IT talents, right? So the tech talent crunch in Singapore is huge. Mm. They tend to struggle to find software engineers, developers to join the company. And because so many international companies are setting up the HQ in Singapore, right? So a lot of the local players or smaller players, they tend to lose out, right? To attract all of these talents. So then what they then have to do, they are then forced to look for talents outside of uh, Singapore, mm. right? Uh, and that's what we mean by a demand market, right? Vietnam happens to be more of a supply market, right? Uh, where you have really strong, great tech talents, right? Vietnam has always been known for that. Uh, that's actually one of the biggest reasons why we chose Vietnam to enter as our third market. Um, so as a supply market, really, you know, it's uh, then matching the, your, your great talents over here, right? To great opportunities outside of Vietnam. Mm. Yeah, and, and that's why probably, you know, on a B2B side of things, the companies in uh, Vietnam, they tend not to know about, you know, this solution that we mm, have. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's quite a suite of solutions with the the, the top of the funnel being uh, the basic, um, most in-demand yeah. service, I guess. Basic's not the right word. Yeah. Uh, the standard, I <laughs> guess sure, you could standard, say. Yeah. And it puts you in the field of uh, competition with recruitment companies, yeah. both executive and, 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 and junior, yeah. most likely. You guys yeah. kind of go between the both, I guess we you do could both. say. Yeah, exactly. um, and then you have more um, engagement platforms. Yeah things that you actually own yep. rather than just the service. Yep. So exactly. excellent. Great. Yeah. So, um, well, there you have it team, uh, all the listeners actually rather, uh, that's, that's Glenn's in a nutshell. Yep. Um, the more exciting things that are happening recently too, I, I know you guys made the news recently for raising a series C, uh, yeah. uh, upwards of $20 million, I believe. And that's a sizable amount for a startup yep. in Southeast Asia. Yep. Um, we'll lo- love to learn more with that new funding, how yeah. that impacts your role as country manager of Vietnam. Ah, okay. um, let's hear about how your team has potentially expanded its capabilities. Okay. You know, there's also the headcount thing. That's not necessarily always a good <laughs> thing, but I'm sure it's it's uh, uh, become larger. Um, and maybe any other specific initiatives okay. uh, in Vietnam that you okay. might want to talk about. Okay, sure. 
Uh, and also your plug for hiring if you are. Oh, wow. There I will. Go. I will do that. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. You're yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we recently raised our, uh, you know, a, a, new, a new round, Series C. Um, I think the plans moving forward uh, would, would, would not change much, to be honest. Uh, I think what this does is it gives us more capital to pursue our mission, right? Uh, and that is to be, you know, to build this uh, full stack platform, mm -hmm. talent platform to empower talents in Southeast Asia, right? I think that is still, um, you know, our mission, what we are very focused on. And I think uh, what this means, right? What this means is that uh, on an execution basis, uh, deepening our footprints in the current markets that we're in. So Singapore, Indonesia, Vietnam, Hong Kong, Taiwan, right? Possibly expansion as well, we'll see. Um, and also I think it's to double down on our existing products and services, right? So um, I think what that really means is to uh, grow our product team and uh, engineering team, right? Uh, and I'll probably do the plug over here, right? <laughs> as you as you invited. So we are hiring in all departments, right? Uh, product, engineering, sales, marketing, growth. Uh, you know, if you like what you're hearing so far, if you like what we're doing, uh, if you want to join our mission to support the talent ecosystem in Southeast Asia and Asia, right? Yeah, uh, do reach out to us and I'd like to have coffee with you. That's great. So <laughs> in Vietnam specifically, how has my role changed? Um, what I can share with you is- More and more work, same pay. <laughs> <laughs> how, your see this <laughs> how has my role changed yeah um it's a good question um i think what is very unique uh, about vietnam is that uh, because i would say your government handled the covid pandemic situation so well right uh really well really impressive i think immediately after july 2020 last year right it seemed like right at least from my business, right? Mm. From my results point of view, COVID didn't happen. And from then it was just like, my team was just steamrolling forward. Uh, right now we are the fastest business uh, unit growing in my company in Glens, yeah. Um, so, you know, um, just, just for some numbers, um, I think right now we are close to two years right now in Vietnam, mm. right? We launched in July, 2019. We have a team of 50 people in Saigon. Right. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the kind of growth we're talking about. And by the end of this year, we're looking to be 70, 80 people in just Saigon alone. Um, as I shared with you as well, I just came back from Hanoi. Yeah. So um, what happened was uh, my commercial director, he told me, Brian, you know, um, it seems like Vietnam is doing well. Can you grow faster? <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, okay. Um, the team is doing pretty well over here and they're pretty stable. The managers are really strong uh, and they can, you know, it's pretty stable right now. They can take the business forward. So I'm like, okay, sure. You know, let me try to go to Hanoi and see how we can expand the business over mm. there. And from what I knew, you know, before I went there, Han Hanoi was, you know, uh, it's an equally, you know, big opportunity, you know, very comparable to Saigon, right? And that's why we decided to expand there, you know, the original plan was only next year, mm. right? Uh, but seems like things are going well, right? Uh, so we are really, uh, you know, turning up the ante uh, and basically, you know, uh, growing, you know, faster, you know. But right now, uh, let me break it down into two phases, you know, to make it simple. I think the first phase, right? If I were to break it down into phases, the first phase is really about uh, serving clients, right, tech companies specifically, right, uh, with their hiring needs. So very focused on building that recruitment solution uh, over here in both um, Saigon and also in Hanoi. Mm. But that's just the first phase, right, because I told you about the other products that we plan to launch as well. So the second phase really is to then build the entire Glins ecosystem, right, where we will launch the other products as well, um, community, expert class. Uh, we also have an academy, right, but let's not get into that. So <laughs> launching, <laughs> launching those uh, products and services over here as well, right, and then building the entire ecosystem, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And when you say expand to Hanoi, I mean, um, like you have a, a team on the ground, kind of like. I have three people right now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Working aggressively in a hiring. co-working space or something like that. I am yeah, in a co-working yeah. space. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. We just launched in Hanoi as well. Oh, you so, did? Yeah. I mean, we, we kind of saw the opportunity the same yeah, in that, yeah. you know, we have a, a density of people here yeah, yeah. on the ground. Okay. We can strike partnerships, develop relationships, all yep. that kind of good stuff very easily. Yep. Uh, source stories, content. Okay. okay. Uh, but Hanoi, we always lacked. Um, 
the the I guess flexibility or uh, speed okay. to do that. Okay. And so uh, we made the decision to install a bureau chief in uh, Hanoi. Okay. Okay. Um, we're hiring uh, editors nice. and even designers nice. in Hanoi. We find certain, you know, I, I would say also competition for talent is also less there in it, the sense that there's not as many <laughs> exciting companies yep. basically. Yep. Um, and if they are, they're more like uh, more traditional businesses. So having anything that's more technology driven or more tapped into Helps like you what young out, people right? are. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but even on a functional level, uh, we observed that I think about, uh, this was before we made the decision to launch an office there, which was actually just two months ago. Okay. Um, we had a bear chief six months ago, but we actually saw that I think, uh, I mean, without kind of considering the rest of the country, but basically, uh, you know, Saigon yep. and its related regions yep. and Hanoi and so forth. Yep. I think our readership was about 80% Saigon oh, okay. and 20% Hanoi. Okay. Um, and how did we get closer? 50-50 would be a bit of a stretch to be honest, yep. but if we can get like 60-40 even, yep. that means yep. we've grown the Hanoi market yep. while the Saigon one continues to grow as well. Yep. Um, so we're, we've set benchmarks to kind of measure that growth nice. and nice. it's actually working quite well. It's, it's about creating content um, that's relatable to that audience, yep. uh, a bit more localized in that sense, while still being on the main platform, of course. And even hiring editors and engaging with communities there uh, has, uh, with just three people on the ground. Actually, one of them is a designer, so she doesn't uh. even actually meet with anyone, but um, <laughs> just going out there has been is very, very helpful. So best of luck to the Glen yeah, Hanoi team as well. I'm sure things will happen. Yeah. Um, organically now that there's people on the ground to, yeah, yeah. to serve those communities. Yeah. Um, well, great, I mean, you know, that, that gives us an idea of, you know, how startups should expand and, and look uh, look at Vietnam. You mentioned your commercial director at Glintz yeah. had yeah. noticed that Vietnam is, or you actually mentioned yourself that Vietnam is the fastest growing, yeah. if not the- Fastest growing business unit within my company is, yeah. is doing so well. And yeah. let's paint a picture for those uh, VCs and you know, people <laughs> looking into Vietnam to expand sure. here. Sure. Why is that? Is, Why is is it, well, let's look at the Vietnam story first, okay. but then secondly, uh, how is the rest, rest of the region faring? Okay. I mean, is, okay. it, is it a function of them not doing well okay. because of COVID okay. and okay. other factors? Okay. Are they just not growing as quickly? Let's, let's dig into that a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, I think uh, first things first, this disclaimer out there, I'm, I'm probably not the expert, right? Macro expert when it comes to this, but I'll, I'll, I will try to add in a few macro points as well. Mm. So I think on a macro level, um, a, few, a few key things. Um, I think number one is the strength in your government, right? I think it's been proven, right, through the course of uh, COVID, right? Vietnam is just an outstanding country. It really showed, uh, you know, the, the, the globe, right? How, how successful and how, how strong the government is. I think that's the first thing. Second thing is about the pace of the economy, right? Even with COVID last year, Vietnam, I think grew four to 5%, mm. right? That's amazing. I think uh, we're also talking about the pace of digital transformation, right? You look at the e-commerce market here today, you look mm. at the uh, payment, you know, payment solutions here as well, right? I think uh, Vietnam is just, has such a high adoption rate, right? And ha such a high adoption growth rate as well. Uh, I think that would be the third reason. And I think, you know, just, you know, looking at the talent economy as well, right? Uh, from a talent point of view, you have a huge growing youth workforce, youth professional workforce. So I think, you know, all the signs point to Vietnam as being, you know, that that that, that standout country that will continue to grow at this fast pace, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, for the next 10 years, and he has been, you know, doing that for the past 10, 15 years already, mm -hmm. right? So I don't think it's going to slow down. Uh, I think that's from a macro point of view. Uh, before you comment on the second sure. part, the more regional stuff, sure. you mentioned the fourth one about the, the youth uh, talent uh, emerging and just growing quickly. I had a meeting with a client before this, an alcohol brand, ah, okay. uh, a pretty big one. And they mentioned, um, I mean, probably pretty rough numbers, but generally speaking, it paints the picture. Every year there's uh, 1 million new people yeah. that are becoming 18 years old nice. in Vietnam. 18, <laughs> that critical number okay. means they're entering university. Yep. They are drinking alcohol. Yep. <laughs> They're probably buying their first motorbike because nice. they don't have to borrow their parents anymore. Yep. 
or they're not getting dropped off at school anymore. They're driving yeah. themselves. Yeah. One million. Wow. I mean, wow. other countries, I'm sure, are matching similar numbers in Southeast Asia. Yeah. But when you add up all those other factors, too, yeah. that they're exactly. actually able to go to school, exactly. whereas other people can't, right? Yeah. Or um, they're they're now going to bars yeah. because, uh, well, I mean, uh, bars have been temporarily closed recently. <laughs> now, but generally speaking, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. F&B, food and beverage, is, is fairly open in yeah. Vietnam. So that's quite exciting. Yeah, you know, one is. million potential new glints uh, of you yeah, every year. Exactly. Exactly. That's pretty significant. So yeah, yeah. Um, just remember that, and for yeah, everyone else I will, listening, I will remember um, the number. <laughs> but you know, regionally, let's look yeah, at that again. Yeah. So, what's going on with the other glints markets that are slowing down sure. or not having them? Number sure, one, basically, sure. I'm sure they're all going quickly. But why are they not? Sure. Number one, I, I, I think to be fair to so so our biggest market right now is Indonesia. We're mm -hmm. also in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, to be fair to Indonesia, they are a more mature market, right? Mm -hmm. They've been in there for four years right now, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's always easier to grow your numbers, right? In terms of percentage wise, right? Base. You know, when you're smaller, yeah. So I think that's the first thing. So definitely they're bigger. <laughs> contribution, revenue contribution, right? Uh, all the top nine numbers, right? They're definitely better than my company, uh, than my team over here, right? I think, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that, uh, you know, the macro, uh, you know, uh, landscape is, is not, as bright over there as in mm. Vietnam. I wouldn't dare to say that also because I did not, I, I do not know, right? I didn't I didn't actually read up on all those news also in Indonesia. Mm. Uh, in Taiwan, right? Taiwan is actually a younger business, right? Uh, for us, so we launched in Vietnam first and then we launched in Taiwan. Mm. So I think Taiwan is, uh, you know, right now we're still in that uh, phase where we just found product market fit, right? And then we're trying to scale things now. Right, we're trying to scale things now. We're trying to hire stronger talent, stronger managers into our team right now after we found the product market fit. So I think at the same time, you know, I can't really say, you know, for sure why, uh, if if Vietnam is is, is, is is a better economy compared mm -hmm. to Taiwan as well. Yeah, so, I, uh, you know, maybe, I, maybe I, internally, yeah. though, uh, aside from, you know, what we've just discussed, have there been key sure. levers and drivers yeah. of the business? Because this is a yes. playbook you've so, developed over exactly, the years, right? Exactly. Like, you know, uh, kind of rolling out that playbook in Vietnam. What yep. are some levers that were Good. like, wow, that was really fast or like, oh, that was really slow. Okay. <laughs> you know, Great. Yeah. maybe you can comment on that. So I think specific to my business, right? So, you know, moving away from the macro point of view, specific to my business, um, the biggest reason why we came to Vietnam, aside from the macro point of view, right, is the, um, you know, the, the strength of your IT tech talent, mm -hmm. right? Your IT, uh, your software engineers, your software developers. So that's why we came to Vietnam. Um, a large part of our business and focus, right, uh, when it comes to recruitment, is uh, serving the the, the, the the demand supply gap in the IT space, right? So this is where the tech talent crunch is is the largest, right? Uh, and and we see it happening, continuing in the next ten years. Mm. If you if uh, and this is happening throughout the whole globe, right? Uh, in Vietnam itself, it is happening right now. There is a tech talent crunch. Um, and if you look at, if you compare, you know, Vietnam with the other mature markets, it's also happening there. So we do believe that even in Vietnam, this will happen in the next 10 years. Mm. Because your, yes, so number one, there is a tech talent crunch. Number two, your talent is fantastic, right? Tech talent is fantastic and there's a huge number of them. Uh, it then presents the, it then paints the picture where by Glintz, we can not only focus on our local recruitment service, but we can also support the cross-border and the remote team solution as well. So right now in Vietnam, it, Vietnam was actually our first market where we provided both solutions, mm. local recruitment and the cross-border uh, cross border solution as well. In a way, you guys are kind of using that service for yourself, right? Yes. Are you yeah. building oh, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. We are doing that as, oh, uh, okay. ourselves as you well. You have an so, engineering team in Singapore, but also one here. Yeah. So okay. our, our, main, our main HQ, our main uh, engineering team mm. is in Singapore. Got yeah. it, got it, got it. So for the office in Jakarta, for example, they only have the local recruitment mm. service. And then we do have another office in Batam, which only has the uh, the, the, the cross-border solution. Mm. So Vietnam is the first one where we had both, mm. right? And I think that is the key Right, that mm. is the key uh, as to why Glintz is in, in Vietnam is growing much faster compared to the other markets. Mm, I see. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that, that's a great insight to, to know <laughs> and then to hear about. Yep. Um, you know that that's that's a uh, a lot about Glintz today. Okay. Um, but before we kind of sign off on the Glintz side, we'd sure. love to hear uh, a last bit about too, like what kind of. You know, you mentioned technology is a huge focus, and yep. is that the focus only, or do you do you help? recruitment with other companies as yeah, well. Good question. Yeah. Okay. So our first industry focus, right, would be, 
you know, towards the IT sector, so supporting tech companies with their hiring. I think other than that, um, at Glintz, we don't necessarily s um, specialize in industries. What we specialize then is in job roles. Mm. So instead of saying, for example, we are really good with SM FMCG, with insurance, right? Um, what we do, what we instead say is that, okay, we are very good with helping companies hire IT talents, mm. sales talents, marketing talents. Yeah, so I think that's our, that's our pitch. So right now we are mainly focused on um, IT, right? It makes up about 70% of our uh, placements, mm. right? Supporting our clients. Uh, 30, the other 30% is, is in sales and marketing jobs, yeah. Got it. And they could be for FMCG insurance exactly. and all these kind of companies. Exactly. Okay, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Great. Well, that gives us a great idea and hopefully to our listeners today about what Glintz does. Um, we're just going to sign off with okay. kind of more uh, personal things. I mean, for you, Ryan, you've right. you've been here for a few years now. Well, you've been out for like <laughs> six months and then you had to yeah, uh, yeah. or involuntarily. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, how, how has Vietnam been for you as a you know, uh, we, we'd love to kind of paint the picture for those considering uh, moving here, okay. um, either as a foreigner or as, even as a Viet Q, as you would call it, Vietnamese overseas. Um, how has that professional transition been for you? Has it been um, challenging? And if so, why? And okay. if it's been rewarding and a mix of both, I would love to hear kind of your general comment on that okay. as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think personally for myself, you know, I am a very flexible person. So it, the transition was was easy with a snap of a finger. Mm. You know, I you know I lived here without any worries. You know, when it comes to food, right? Um, you know, I can eat anything, and it wouldn't be a problem for me. When it comes to transport, you know, I think it's great as well. Um, unlike Singapore, there are no trains, there are no buses. I mean, there are buses, right? But uh, you can get around easily with mm. you know just a grab bike, right? Mm. I think uh, you know when it comes to living conditions, um, Vietnam. You know, it, it's great, right? I, I did not face any challenges, uh, you know, in terms of my lifestyle changes. Um, I do want to point out food. <laughs> Many of my friends uh, in Singapore, I think in Singapore, right? Mm. The thing is, Vietnamese food isn't very well represented. Right, right. It's like only pho. And then, curious, yeah. and then that's it. Out of all the Southeast Asian foods, it's yeah, like the and least. Like, like we have great Thai food, we have great mm. Indian food, you know, we have great Jap food. But when it comes to Vietnamese food, right, it's very misrepresented mm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So many of my friends, they only know pho and they know nothing else <laughs> until they came to Vietnam and they're like, oh wow, Vietnam has a lot of food. But, but for people who do not like vegetables. Mm. <laughs> they don't like their bean sprouts, mm. you know, they don't like the mint leaves and all, you know, they tend not to enjoy Vietnamese food. Mm -hmm. Right. For me, I love it. Mm. Right. I, I love vegetables. So I, you know, I'm a big fan of Vietnamese food, but I think for all the listeners over here today, um, if you're in Saigon, you don't have to worry, mm. right? Because Saigon has it's such very international, a, actually very international. They have such an array of international cuisines. Um, a lot of them is much better than, you know, back in my home country as mm. well. <laughs> so I, I love staying here, right? Uh, it's, it's easy to adapt. Uh, people are very nice as well. You know, I, I do have people, I do have my colleagues and, and friends telling me that um, you do have to be careful when you hold your phone. You know, you might, you, you know, people might steal it and all. But so far, right, I have not had a single experience like that. Mm. Uh, it might help that I look Vietnamese <laughs> and everyone speaks to me. You I was know. about to say, pro <laughs> probably people are listening to this podcast and yeah. they're like, why aren't they speaking Vietnamese yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> so I think that definitely helps. Uh, but I think so far it's been a great journey. It's been mm. a great time over here. I consider Vietnam as my second home. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I'll Fantastic. definitely be back. <laughs> cool. Well, second home for Glintz as well. Second, so not yeah. just for Brian. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> Brian, thank you for making your time available today and sharing more about Glintz's journey in Vietnam. And, and of course, best of uh, luck and wish uh, best wishes to the Glintz family thank for you. their continued growth in the country. And uh, looking forward to having you maybe back on the podcast yeah, in a few so. years, seeing how fun. Glintz will be. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank um, you for this. Yeah. Yeah, thank you again, guys. Uh, for those listeners, this is another episode of Vietnam Innovators with your host, Hao, and of course, our guest, Brian Lee of uh, Glintz. Uh, based here in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City, but a, uh, a regional company. Uh, if you'd like to know a little more about Glintz, um, make sure you look at the description below. Um, there's plenty of information about there, uh, about Glintz online. Thank you again, Brian, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you. Check out the Vietnam Innovators series on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to listen to other innovative stories in Vietnam. Thanks for listening to another episode of Vietnam Innovators, brought to you by our partners, health tech startup GeoHealth. 
They're best known for their doctor at home services, but offer much more than that. If you haven't already, check out their mobile apps on the App Store and Google Play for more, or drop by for a visit to their new smart clinic at M Plaza in Ho Chi Minh City.